question. Good afternoon, my name is Andy, A-N-D-Y, Ray, R-A-Y. I'm the police chief in the city of Bartow. Uh, give you a summary real quick on what happened out here today. At about uh, 10 minutes till four this afternoon, our officers were dispatched to a report of an armed disturbance. Uh, that information was coming from a caller in the area of Bartow Ford, which is about uh, uh, three quarters of a mile up the road behind me. The caller said that uh, a person was armed with a gun and was waving the gun around at the time and uh, was threatening people with it. So as officers were responding, uh, they got just behind me and uh, encountered an, an individual that was walking south on the side of 98, uh, down kind of close to the, uh, to the um, water-filled ditch on the shoulder of the road. And they recognized him as matching the general description of the person that was waving the gun in the area of Bartow Ford. Uh, one of our officers stopped his car just beyond that gentleman and got out to uh, confront him. And a second officer pulled up and stopped his car, uh, which is this one right here on my left. Uh, and immediately there was some uh, brief dialogue. Uh, the gentleman started to turn and head east towards the, the water in the ditch. I took a couple of steps, turned back, and pulled a pistol out and pointed it directly at one of my officers, the first officer that encountered him. And at that point, the officer fired his gun and his backup officer also fired his pistol um, to answer that threat. Uh, the suspect was shot a couple of times that we're aware of. Uh, none of our officers were shot in the, in the uh, incident. Um, once they were able to get control of the uh, suspect who pulled the gun on them. Um, they then administered some uh, medical assistance to him and requested EMS. And uh, at that point, EMS responded. He's been transported to the Lakeland Regional Medical Center. He's uh, shot at least two times in the torso, and uh, he's in critical condition now and receiving care at Lakeland Regional. Um, this, uh, this incident started earlier, and this is a continuance of that. Um, I'm going to let or ask a sheriff. Um, th I'm going to ask the sheriff to to uh, comment on that as well. But also uh, know that the Polk County Sheriff's Office and Sheriff Judd are uh, are in charge of the Officer Involved Daily Incident Task Force, which is the uh, State Attorney's Office multi-agency investigative uh, group that responds to and investigates Officer Involved uh, Daily Incidents in our three county area, Polk. Hardy and Highlands counties. Uh, so, Sheriff, if you'll cover that, please. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Chief. This is one more example of how law enforcement officers respond to events and have absolutely no idea of the danger they are going to immediately face. This began as a disturbance with a guy armed with a gun. We go to those by the baker's dozen every day in every agency in law enforcement but this one was different. What Bartow police did not know at that mo moment in time is that this man, Joshua Lee Walker, he's 32 years of age, had been in a conflict with his mother in Highland City where, they, where his mother lives. He asked for her car. He said, I've got to leave. There's outstanding warrants for me. The mother refused to give him the car. He took a nine millimeter pistol and pointed it to his head. And he said, well, I'll do suicide by cop. And then he left the residence. Mom did not call the sheriff's office because she didn't want the conflict. Well, what does this guy do? He immediately goes down to the local liquor store, which is just a couple of blocks from home, where he carjacks a car at 344 this afternoon. That's right, a lady sitting in the car, her husband's gone into the liquor store, he pulls his gun out, the lady jumps from the vehicle, the man says, hey, take the car, get out of here. He flees south on Highway 8. As Joshua is fleeing south on 98, now in the carjacked vehicle, he comes up to the intersection of Ernest Smith Boulevard 
and he rams, tries to ram through two vehicles, striking a large dually pickup truck, damaging that significantly. The vehicle at that time curves across the, the southbound lanes into the northbound lane and hits another vehicle with two passengers. He careens off of that and the car that he's carjacked is totally destructed and he gets out with his firearm and tries to carjack two more vehicles that are northbound on this road. They drive past him, they refuse to stop. At that time, he turns to run south in the northbound lane and as he's running south, the Bartow police receive a disturbance call. So they think they're just going to an armed disturbance. At that moment in time, they have no idea that they're going to this very violent, very dangerous man who has threatened suicide by cop, threatened to commit suicide, committed at least one carjacking, tried to do two more carjackings, rammed innocent people who were just, pay, just driving down the road or stopped at a traffic light. Well, what Joshua learned is don't try that in small town. If you do, you'll get shot. You'll get shot a lot. And that's exactly what happened. These Bartow police officers did an absolute magnificent job. They're heroes. They protected themselves. They protected the community. Because this guy, this guy who already had outstanding warrants for, let me think, uh, how about possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, failure to appear. How about his criminal history, 30 pages long? How about the fact that he's already been to prison two times? He knew he was on his way back to prison and he wasn't going back to prison. That's what the men and women of law enforcement face every day. People just like this egghead here. So at the end of the day, he learned, you don't try that in small town. You don't try that in Polk County. You don't try that in Bartow or you're going to get shot and shot a lot. I'm very grateful and thankful that none of our law enforcement officers were killed or injured. I'm very thankful and grateful that none of the people carjacked were injured. I'm very grateful that the ones that were hit suffered very minor injuries, ones being treated at the hospital. He is in surgery right now at Lakeland Regional Health. He is in significantly critical condition. But at the end of the day, it was his choice. His choice to threaten his mom. His choice to carjack. His choice to point the gun at the police officers. His choice was for the police officers to shoot him and that's exactly what they did. Are there any questions? You know what we know. You've got the 30,000 foot view. As you know, this event just occurred. And as I always give the disclaimer, this is the best information that Chief Andy Ray and I and our detectives have at this moment in the investigation. Certainly we'll, we'll modify that should those details change later on. But at the end of the day, this is a thug. This is a criminal. This is a sorry individual who wanted to create all kinds of havoc in the community. And the police stopped him today, just like they should have. Okay, thank you very much. Chief. Yes, uh, they'll be on administrative leave um, during the initial stage of the investigation and uh, uh, make sure that they're okay emotionally, physically. Yes. Okay, thank you very much.